Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to see you all here. Do we have any visitors amongst us? Anyone? No one who would consider themselves a visitor. You've all been here a while. Thank you. Oh, more. How about that? Is that better? Okay. As we prepare for our service this morning, I'd like to invite you into a ritual of centering. If you'd like to, you may light a candle for joy, inspiration, or aspiration to be placed in the bed of earth from our soil communion. Know then that your joy brings joy to others and is such held by this community. Or if you'd rather, you may wish to focus on a burden or a grief you would like to release. In this case, you're welcome to drop a stone into our communion water as a representation of release and the comfort of knowing your heaviness is accepted and embraced by this congregation. As a private practice, we hope this fortifies your heart and soul. As a public gesture and witness, we hope it knits us closer together as a community of care. And so, as Vox Lumina sings, I am listening, I invite you to bring your light and release your grief. this morning in gratitude by our celebrants Stuart and Jean. Stuart, will you please bring some caring water to add to our communion water? And Jean, would you please bring some light from the congregation to the altar? As an invocation and signal that our time here is holy, will you join me as we light the chalice? Thank you, Jean. And we pour the water into the altar. Thank you. We kindle this flame as a symbol of our gathering. Stuart and Jean, thank you. In this community, we celebrate each of you from all walks of life, 
No matter how you make your living, or if it was make a living and now you are reaping the benefits, or how you experience the sacred, no matter who you are or who you love, we hope you will feel welcome here. I have found myself in the last few months, perhaps years, continually questioning how this situation evolved. Could I have done something different? How did this happen? So many questions. But as we have moved into the last few months, I find an equally strong impulse to not attempt to answer these questions, not yet. To everything there is a season. I am moved to acknowledge them, hold them in abeyance until the time is right to dig deep to search for wise counsel and answers. But for now, I wish to speak to and acknowledge the condition of those of you gathered in this congregation. I wish to acknowledge all of your confusion, your hurt, your frustration, regardless of which side you might find yourself on. In this time, I have leaned heavily on the subtle influence of my Quaker heritage. And in this service today, I hope to draw upon both Quaker wisdom and the wisdom from the Unitarian Universalist tradition. Yes, I am going to hold out questions which I have and perhaps you have because these questions are part of the fabric of this community at this time. But I am not attempting to answer those questions. I am instead content to wait, confident that held by the wisdom of Unitarian Universalist thought and emerging revelation, answers will emerge, which can guide us towards greater truth and understanding. So as we come together today, let us join together in heart, mind, and voice to sing, where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? Please rise to sing. A bit faster than that. Where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? Again. questions is, Alison, who's going to help you with doing PowerPoint presentations? <laughs> Reflection one. Where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? This is a question referring to our history, history of humanity, history of Canadian society history of Unitarian Universalism, history of this congregation. As we move into a time of contemplation, I give you these quotes. 
from John Haynes Holmes, who was an American Unitarian minister and a pacifist. Revelation is not sealed, answering unto man's endeavor. Truth and right are still revealed. And from the Quaker tradition, bring everything that concerns you into the light so that you may feel a weakening of what is unworthy in you and a strengthening of what is good. Accept and support each other in love. As we move into this time of quiet, I invite you to allow questions to float into your mind that concern you, and yet also trust that the wisdom of those gathered, the love of them, and the source will speak to the uncertainty and feelings that exist in this community. Perhaps when we are able to hold in our consciousness uncertainty and possibility without seeking to close the door by coming to conclusions, perhaps then as we sit in tender love for ourselves and others, we can find within ourselves and within this community new possibilities, new ways of being that might not have emerged otherwise. We are going to have four minutes of silence, at the end of which I will ring the chime to bring us back from contemplation. So I would encourage you to allow questions to come into your mind, but seek not to answer them. Hold them in trust. What now? What does this question hold? Perhaps, how do we go on? Perhaps, who is in charge? I can tell you that this congregation has a generous supply of people who can bring leadership, integrity, and management skills to this development and running of the life and work of this congregation. I know that they will invite the longings and passions of you all into the vision of how we will unfold as we move forward. The doing of societies goes hand in hand with the being. In the Quaker communities, the meeting for business, the work of the community is held in high regard and regarded as the tool that allows the whisperings of the spirit to be made manifest in the world. Here is a beautiful quote from the advices and queries on meetings for business. Come to meetings for business with a willingness to listen to everyone, whatever their contributions. Allow your insights and personal wishes to take their place alongside those of others, and if necessary, let them be set aside. Use as few words as possible, but as many as are needed. I have witnessed this amongst you in this congregation, in your town hall meetings. I don't quite remember the various occasions, perhaps around the discussion of two services, perhaps around language, prayer, but I was awed every time by the deep listening, the attending of the word of each member as they felt their time to stand up and speak their truth. I was aware that even as you spoke your individual truth, you also loved and respected those who might see the issue from a different perspective. And I sensed 
that you were willing in your deepest convictions to shift your opinions, to enlarge our vision of truth. I can hear you thinking, yeah, right. So what happened this last few years? There is a season for everything under heaven, and today is not the day for analysis. But perhaps we can learn some tools to use in the future when we find ourselves becoming hijacked by desire, the need for control, fear. Let's practice taking a breath recalibrating ourselves. I'm guiding us now through a meditation. After each chime, I'll allow some time for silence, and then I'll ring the chime again. A shorter silence this time. <clears throat> I invite you to close your eyes. Imagine a very bright light, warm, rich with luminosity. As you breathe in, imagine this light enveloping you with care and compassion. Allow the thoughts and feelings which can intrude on your well-being to just be there. Notice them. Perhaps name them. Thank them for trying to protect you and what you value. Come back to the light. The light envelops you with care, love, compassion. And again, expand the light to embrace those whom you love. Breathe into this expanded light. <clears throat> And we expand the light still more, enveloping those whom we know, everyone, everyone we've come in contact with throughout our life. The light shines through them and through you. Give yourself a moment to notice who pops into your mind.
Now imagine seeing our planet from space, seeing the light warm, illumined, and infinitely loving, encasing all beings, all things, indeed, all of Gaia. As we come back to this time together, notice if something has shifted in you, if there is a new truth emerging. Sense the people around you, for they love you. I invite you to hold this as the choir sings the Cantique de Jean Racine. <clears throat> Thank mm -hmm. you.
Who are we now? From Dr. Issei Barnwell, we are mothers of courage and fathers of time. We are daughters of dust and the sons of great visions. We are sisters of mercy and brothers of love. We are lovers of life and the builders of nations. We are seekers of truth and keepers of faith. We are makers of peace and the wisdom of ages. Dr. Issei's words are general. I am going to be specific. I look out at you and I see people who have dedicated their lives to loving children, partners, families, their friends, who have raised and continue to help and love good people. I see folk who have devoted their lives to helping others, helping our world, and speaking up for the poor and oppressed. I see those of you who have dedicated your lives to educating humanity about the perils in which we have put our existence and the planet. And those who work every day for creating peace and justice in family, community, and nation. Now, you may be thinking, but that's not me. What have I done to further peace, equity, and a healthy planet? Have you greeted someone today? Have you smiled at someone today? Have you touched someone lightly on the arm, showing compassion and empathy? Or perhaps have you reached out and said, I am so tired, I am weary, I have nothing more to give. In this case, you spoke truth and you gave another an opportunity to reach beyond themselves, to love another. The love in each of these moments is the material that holds us together. The truth speaking, the wisdom, the compassion with which you greet every person, even if it is one that you meet on the street that you will never see again. This saves lives. Yes, in this congregation we have had our challenges and our strifes, but I know that you know that our challenges are small compared to the, fe the perils faced to equity and our environment. And so the work of this church goes on. There is a passion here in this room to use the collective voices of the North Shore Unitarian Church with the wider organization of Unitarian Universalism and organizations that promote peace, justice, and equity beyond these walls. You do have the capacity to make a difference each one of you, if you have any calling, no matter how small, to meet the needs of this world, this is a place where you can manifest that calling. And I invite each of us, as we move into next year, to do the just this. Let us join together our voices in singing, We Are Our Grandmother's Prayers. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the And the builders of nations, we're seekers of truth. 
please be seated. In the life of this congregation, we have joys and we have losses. This last week, three of our beloved congregation members passed away. B. Egger, on May 10th. Her memorial service will be on Friday at 2 p.m., June 2nd, here. Also, Kevin Bell, Trish Mason's husband, passed away on May 12th. I didn't have it up there, I'm sorry. And Sally Mitchner also passed away on May 15th. So far, we don't have a memorial service planned for Sally and Kevin, but it will come, I'm sure. Another announcement is that the annual general meeting for this congregation will be held after church next Sunday. I'm sure it will be busy. It will be wonderful and important. Also, Vox Lumina and Friends, your church choir, are performing the beautiful work Adiemus, Songs of Sanctuary, on June 3rd at 7 p.m. here at the North Shore Unitarian Church. This concert is a charity event and proceeds beyond expenses. We'll be going to Family Smart Mental Health nonprofit group. Tickets are now on sale in the narthex, and you have to try and get past Barry if you expect to get out of the door without buying a ticket. I would encourage you to not only purchase tickets for yourselves, but for those of your friends, other congregation members. Let's pack this place for this event. We are now taking a moment to receive the offering. Every minute of every day, love is making all things new, giving and giving and giving again. And you are called to be a part of this work of generosity. You are called to give, to celebrate the giving of your time, talent and treasures to this light-filled work of making all things new. You are called to give. We are called to give. This morning's offering will now be received. Thank you. Let us now conclude this time together by taking our chalice into our hearts as we extinguish this, fl this flame. And Catherine is taking her life into her hands and is going to attempt to extinguish the flame. 
now. <laughs> We extinguish this flame, but carry with us the light of vision and the warmth of hope. Don't worry about that, we'll do it one more time. Let us extinguish this flame, but carry with us the light of vision and the warmth of hope. The world calls us to live with depth, meaning, and purpose. We go forth with courage and love. That's the only thing we could find that would put it off. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. May we all take what has been life-giving and precious from this morning and from this week and carry it close to us as we step out again into this world, sharing with those we come into contact with the gift of grace that we find in this place. Let us join our voices together to sing Circle Round for Freedom. Yes? Oh, I 